The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike. Yeah. I used to switch from brand to brand, but now I'm true to one. For I love Lucky's better taste, that means more smoking fun. Honestly, Lucky's tastes better than any other cigarette. Make any smoking test you want, you'll see in just a minute. Each puff on Lucky Strike will prove there's more enjoyment in it. You bet. Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Friends, you know there's a real difference in cigarettes. Some are almost tasteless, while others are far too strong. Now, you can't get full enjoyment out of smokes like those. That's why for complete smoking enjoyment, switch to Lucky Strike. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. You see, Lucky's are a truly happy blend which gives you everything you want in a cigarette. The reason is fine tobacco. For fine tobacco and only fine tobacco always gives you perfect mildness and rich, true taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So for complete smoking enjoyment, make your next carton Lucky Strike. Yes, be happy, go lucky, because Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, since this is Easter, we bring you a man who put a small rabbit in his hat so he could have a little hair on his head. And here he is, Jack Bunny. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Bunny. I mean, Jack Benny talking. <laughs> and Don, that was a very clever introduction. Oh, did you like it? No, no, I didn't like it. But your joke did fit. What do you mean? What I mean is I thought it was very appropriate for you to start an Easter program by laying an egg. <laughs> Congratulations. Now, wait a minute, Jack. That was a very funny joke, and the audience thought so, too. They did not. They did, too. I'll pick anybody in the audience and prove it. Say, uh, uh, mister, mister. Oh, me? Yes, would you come up here for a minute? Don, we don't have to go through all of that. Jack. Oh, yes, we do. My future's at stake. You don't have to worry. You saved your money. Oh. <laughs> Don, believe me, it isn't that. Hey, did you want me, mister? Yes, yes. I, I, I want to ask you something, and I want your unbiased opinion. What did you think of that joke? What joke? <laughs> you see, Don, you see? What joke? The one I told when I introduced Jack Benny. Who's he? <laughs> Who's he? For your information, I'd like you to know Oh, that... wait a minute, Jack. I guess I was wrong in calling him up here. You bet you were wrong. Okay, mister, you can go sit down. Not so fast, bub. Where's my refrigerator? <laughs> refrigerator? Well, certainly. You call me up on a stage, you ask me a lot of silly questions, and I'll pay you off. <laughs> Look, mister, this isn't a quiz program. This is a comedy show. We only got you out of the audience to give us an opinion. You woke me up just for that? Now, you can go sit down. I'm not going to ask you any more questions. Okay, Senator. <laughs> go already. Oh, uh, Jack, I'm sorry about the whole thing. That's all right, Don. Maybe I shouldn't have picked on your joke, but you see, I was so sure that since today is Easter, your introduction would have been something about my new suit, you know? Oh, forgive me, Jack. That is a beautiful suit. But what's that patch on the left shoulder? Hmm, I didn't think it would show. Patch on a new suit? Well, Don, I had to make a little alteration. You see, when it was delivered to me, my coat had three sleeves. Anyway, I think the color... But, Jack, how in the world can you get a coat with three sleeves? 
Well, you see, Don, this suit was made to measure, and it's my own fault for going to a tailor who was nearsighted. Oh, nearsighted? I kept telling him there was a guy standing next to me. <laughs> but he wouldn't believe me, you know. Anyway, I'm glad I got this suit. Well, Jack, on Easter, everybody dresses up. Not everybody, Don. Just look at the boys in Phil's band. I mean, look at the way they're dressed. If they spread themselves out, they could keep the crows away from 460 acres. <laughs> You'd think they would at least show, have the little Easter spirit. Hold it, Adrian. Hold it. <laughs> huh? They've got the Easter spirit. Look at Sammy, my drummer. Sammy? Hey, he does, he does look different, you know? Certainly does. This morning, my boys got up bright and early and went to Sammy's house and colored his head. <laughs> oh, yes, it's pink. I thought he was blushing. <laughs> now turn them big blue eyes on me, Jackson, and pay a little compliment. I'm really dressed for Easter, ain't I? Yes, you are, Phil, but why shouldn't you dress well? You can afford it, you know. You do your, you know, you do my show, your own show. Personal appearances, recordings. Yeah. Tell me, Phil, what is your biggest source of income? Shooting pool. <laughs> Shooting pool? When you can sink the 5, 10, and 15 ball with one shot, you're in the upper bracket. <laughs> well, how can you always be talking about pool? After all, you're a family man. I mean, what do your children think about it? They love it. What? When they say they want to see Hoppy, they mean Willie, not Cassidy. <laughs> Well, I'd like to sit down and have a long talk with you, but I don't have the time now. You see, tonight we're going to do a very important sketch. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. As I was saying, we're going to do a very important sketch tonight about... I was in the Easter parade this morning. You were? That's nice. You'll never guess who, was, who else was there. Who? There was Brannigan, Flanagan, Milligan, Gilligan, Duffy, McCuffy, Malarkey, Mahone, now, Lafferty, Dennis, Lafferty, stop Donnelly, it, Connolly, Julio, Dennis, Julie, Madonna, Malone, Malone, Wait a minute. Madigan, stop Cadigan, Lan... St. Patrick's Day was last week. Dennis... Dennis, let me ask you a question. A question? Yes. Why are you so silly? I refuse to answer on the grounds that it might tend to incriminate me. <laughs> oh, you've been watching the investigating committee on television, huh? Yeah, I watch one fellow for hours. He isn't half as funny without Abbott. <laughs> Now, Don, as I started to tell you before, as soon, as soon as Mary gets here, she may be a little late. You see, her sister Babe is visiting her from Plainfield. Anyway, as soon as Mary gets here, we're going to do a very important sketch based on a picture that's nominated for the Academy Awards. Say, that's right. This is the week of the Academy Awards. Hey, Jackson. What? You never did win anything, did you? No, Phil, not personally, but my pictures made a wonderful showing. Again, to be or not to be, the director won an award. And George Washington slept here, the cameraman got an award. What about the horn blows at midnight? The audience got the award. <laughs> well, you're wrong about that because there was no audience. <laughs> I mean, there was no audience. <laughs> and Phil, I'll make you a deal. If you forget about the horn blows at midnight, I'll forget about Wabash Avenue. And what, pray tell, was wrong with my performance in Wabash Avenue? Phil, all I know is Betty Grable and Victor Mature were in that picture with you. That's right. Well, since then, Betty Grable made two more pictures with Dan Daly. Victor Mature made three more pictures with June Haver. And Phil, what have you been doing? Shooting pool with Zanuck. <laughs> <laughs> what? Two more games and the studio is mine. <laughs> Not if he shoots with a polo mallet. <laughs> now, Phil, if you'll be quiet for a moment, I'd like to tell the audience about the Academy Award picture we're going to do. Oh, say, Mr. Benny, maybe I'll win an Oscar for that picture I was in. What picture was that, Dennis? I'll Get By. Oh, yes, I'll Get By. That title was taken from a song. It was? Yes, Dennis. I'll Get By as long as I have you. You said it, kid. <laughs> oh, quiet. Now, Don... Oh, excuse me. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, what'd you call for? Well, boss, I want you to know that when you leave for New York tonight to do your television show, you'll be gone by train. By train? 
But Rochester, I've been dickering all week with the airplane company. They called and said they thought your proposition over, but decided against it. Against it? Yeah, they said they don't care if you do wear your Charlie's Ant costume, they don't need an extra stewardess. <laughs> oh, well, that's too bad. And, boss, when I thought you were flying, I even saved on your luggage. How'd you do that? You know your gray suit, the one that makes you look like Clark Gable? Yes. Well, I took the padding out of the shoulders and I put in two pairs of pajamas, ten pairs of socks, four suits of underwear, and three dozen handkerchiefs. Well, good, good. In the other shoulder, I put your shirts, ties, <laughs> hat room, and two dozen sandwiches. Sandwiches? When you get hungry, just reach up your sleeve and people will think you're a magician. Never mind. I just see that everything is packed. Now, go by, Rochester. I'll see you later. Oh, oh say, boss. Now what? I've got a very funny joke for your radio program. A joke? What is it, Rochester? What is it? Well, ask Mr. Wilson if he knows why a tangerine is like a manhole cover. Oh, oh, thanks, Rochester, thanks. Goodbye. Hey, hey, Don. Oh, yes, Jack. Don, I just thought of the funniest joke. Do you know why a tangerine is like a manhole cover? No, Jack, why is a tangerine like a manhole cover? <laughs> <laughs> because... Oh, my goodness, I forgot to ask Rochester. <laughs> How do you like that? Jack, what are you mumbling about? Nothing, nothing. Drop it. I won't drop it. Why is a tangerine like a manhole cover? Because Mr. Benny's the boss, and if you don't shut up, you're fired. Thanks, Dennis. Oh, that's all right. You'll get by as long as you have me. Oh, stop! <laughs> now, Don, we have to start our sketch pretty soon, but first, we've got to have the commercial. Oh, yes, Jack, and since this is the first Sunday of spring, the... Sportsmen have prepared an appropriate number, Mendelssohn Spring Song. Mendelssohn Spring Song? Oh, that's wonderful, Don. And there's a part in it for you where you play the violin. There wasn't till rehearsal when I made you put it in, you know. Now, hand me my violin. Okay, fellas. Now, I'm, uh, I'm first in this. Mendelssohn Spring Song.
wonderful, boys. Thank you very much. Now, Don, I think that we should have a... Come in. Hey, look who it is. It's Mary's sister, Bay. Hello, Jack. Well, Babe, this certainly is a pleasant surprise. You know my cast, don't you? Yes, Jack. I met them a long time ago. Hi, Babe. Hello, Dennis. Say, Jack, he's cute. I love tenors. Really? Yes. You know, I used to be a tenor before my voice changed. <laughs> well, now that you've mentioned your voice, Babe, I wish you'd try to raise it a little. You see, it might be confusing. What do you mean, confusing? Well, people think they're hearing Tallulah on both networks. <laughs> Will you, will you raise it a little? I'll try, darling. Thanks. <laughs> now, tell me, uh, how come you dropped in on the program, babe? Mary sent me. What? The doctor wants her to take it easy for another week or so. Oh, well, I wish I'd have known earlier. We're going to do our version of Sunset Boulevard today. And Mary was supposed to play Gloria Swanson's part. Well, Jack, why don't you let me play the Gloria Swanson role? You? But, babe, you haven't... You know, you haven't had any acting experience. Well, Jack, I almost was an actress. You almost was, was an actress? <laughs> oh, oh. Well, that's all right. That's all right. You, you were? Huh? <laughs> oh, well, yes. yes. Huh? When I graduated from high school, I didn't know whether I should become a radio actress or a stage actress. Oh, well, what did you become? A mechanic. <laughs> Babe, uh, let me talk to Don a minute, will you? Don, Don, what do you think we ought to do? Well, Jack, what else can we do? It's too late to change the program. I know, Don, but letting her play Gloria Swanson's part. I mean, we're taking an awful chance. They've never acted before. You know? But, Jack, we're stuck, so we'll just have to do the best we can. Oh. Well, all right, babe, you can play the part that Gloria Swanson played in the picture. We'll try it. I'll play William Holden's part, and Dennis... You'll play Eric von Stroheim's part. <laughs> Eric von Stroheim? Yes. But Babe looks more like him than I do. <laughs> Never mind. But I don't want to play the part of a German butler. What? I don't want to play the part of a German butler. You'll play it, and that's all there is to it. Don, set the scene. All right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present our version of that picture which has won several Academy Award nominations, Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> What can I do for you? Uh, J.S., I got a story I'd like to sell you that'll make a great picture. A story, eh? Well, give me a brief outline. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, the hero of my story is a psychiatrist. Oh, and... no good, my boy. No good. The psychiatry cycle's done. Washed up. The trend today is pictures like uh, Broken Arrow, Tomahawk, Indian stuff. I know. You see, my hero is a half-breed psychiatrist. <laughs> Uh, 
Now, the girl comes to him. You and... have a girl in the story? Yes, why? Dated stuff. Movie fans want animals in pictures like... Like Lassie, Francis the Mule, Bonzo the Chimp. Oh, I know, I know. But the reason the girl is going to the psychiatrist is because her pet centipede has a complex. <laughs> ah, that's a good angle. A centipede with a complex. Yes, this centipede thinks his shoes are too tight and the girl's going broke buying him Dr. Scholl's foot pad. <laughs> I, uh, I'm afraid that's a little too fantastic, my boy, too fantastic. As a writer, Gillis, you should realize that... Well, hello, H.W. Hiya, J.S. I dropped in to ask you if you'd like to have lunch with me and L.B. I'd like to, H.W., but I've got a lunch date with M.J. and B.G. <laughs> well, how about tonight? I'm picking up J.T. and we're going to have dinner with R.S. I'm sorry, but I'm having dinner with Daryl Zanuck. Who? <laughs> D.Z. Oh. Well, so long. See you later, J.S. <laughs> Goodbye, H.W. I followed H.W. out of J.S.'s office because I had a date with L.S. and M.F. to have tea. <laughs> but that day, the finance company tried to repossess my car. They chased me down Sunset Boulevard. To escape them, I turned into the driveway of an old dilapidated mansion. The door was open, so I walked in. When my eyes became accustomed to the gloom, I realized the house wasn't deserted. Then suddenly, I saw her. <laughs> she was majestically descending a long spiral staircase. She must have come down that staircase often because her legs were spiral too. <laughs> then she stopped and spoke. What do you want here? <laughs> I pulled into your driveway. I thought this was an empty house. Well, it's not, so get out. All right, I'll... Wait a minute. I know your face. You're Norma Desmond. You used to be in pictures. You used to be big. I'm still big. It's the pictures that got small. <laughs> she was right. Her television set only had a seven-inch screen. <laughs> but I turned to her and said, Miss Desmond, I've always been a fan of yours. I went to all your movies. And you were a great actress on the stage, too. Yes, there was one role I played hundreds of times. I'll never forget my favorite speech. I always felt a thrill as I said it. How did it go? If I were king. Yes, if I were king. But that's a man's part. Now he tells me. <laughs> Look, Miss Desmond, since you've retired from pictures, how do you get money? Oh, I own some stock some income property, several apartment houses, and I have oil wells up at Bakersfield that are pumping, pumping, pumping. Gee, stock, property, apartment houses, and oil wells that are pumping, pumping. <laughs> What's your largest source of income? Shooting pool. <laughs> when I told her I was a writer, she asked me to stay and help her with a screenplay she was preparing for her comeback. For weeks, Norma and I worked hard writing her screenplay, and gradually she began to care for me. I soon realized that she was really in love with me. Sometimes she would hold my hand. Sometimes she would pat my cheek. And one night, as she was running her fingers through my hair, I walked into the room. <laughs> I turned to her and said, Norma, this is a beautiful night. Let's go out for a ride. We can't use the car tonight. Why not? It's at the service station. It's up on the grass reek. <laughs> you too, it must run in the family. <laughs> Look, Norma, I'm hungry. Let's go out and get something to eat. We don't have to go out. I'll have my butler prepare something for you. Oh, Max. Yeah, my Fräulein, what is los with you? <laughs> Max, I'm hungry. What can you make for me? Gedampfte Brust, Sauerbraten, Wiener Schnitzel, Hassen Pfeffer, and Kuschlein mit Sibylis. What's Kuschlein mit Sibylis? I don't know. I told you I didn't want to play this part. <laughs> Never mind that. Just bring me a ham sandwich. Ja, mein Herr. Joe, dear, you have your sandwich. I'm going to change into something more comfortable. 
As I waited for my sandwich, I took something out of the fruit bowl. When I bit into it, I broke my two front teeth. <laughs> it was then I realized how important it was to know the difference between a tangerine and a manhole cover. <laughs> I began to tire of the whole situation. I decided to leave. And as I was packing my things to go, Max suddenly interrupted me. You are leaving here, mein Herr? No, I'm taking it with me. <laughs> yes, Max, I'm leaving. I can't stand it any longer. This is a weird household. Norma is so possessive. And you keep watching me. Always watching. Oh, but I got a right to watch because even though I am now her butler, once I was her 17th husband. You were her 17th husband? Who were the others? There was Brannigan, Flanagan, Milligan, Gilligan, Duffy, McCuffy, Malarkey, Mahone, Now Rapp cut that out! And stand aside! Mine here, I wouldn't leave here if I was you. Well, you're not me, so get out of my way. Max, Max, what's the matter? Oh, Fraulein, he's gonna leave you. No, Joe, no. I've got to, Norma. Joe, you can't do this. Max, stop him. Look at me, Joe. Look at me. I can't face life without you. You're everything to me. My life, my love. If you go, I'll kill myself. Do you hear me? I'll kill myself. It was after she read this big dramatic speech that I wish Mary were back on the show. <laughs> I grabbed my typewriter and rushed out of the house. She followed me screaming. Joe, Joe, you can't leave me. I'm going, Norma. Goodbye. You can't go, Joe. Nobody leaves a star. Ooh. Yes, she killed me. And I fell dead in her swimming pool. The only consolation is that they gave me a nice funeral. And I had wonderful pallbearers. There was Brannigan, Flanagan, <laughs> Milligan, Gilligan, Duffy, McGuffy, Malarkey, Mahone, Rafferty, Lafferty, Connolly, Donnelly, Dooley, Shapiro. <laughs> yes, that is my story. I lived and died on Sunset Boulevard. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment. And now let's review this morning's Easter Parade. My Easter bonnet is the best, so men will be beguiled. The way they are by Lucky Strike, the smoke of rich and mild. That's why Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. This happy day I win real plays when strolling down the street. Cause I get perfect Lucky Strikes to everyone I meet. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Friends, Lucky's tastes better than any other cigarette, and here's why. Fine tobacco, and only fine tobacco always gives you perfect mildness and rich, true tobacco taste. And every smoker knows, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, with every Lucky you light, you always get that happy blending of real mildness and rich, true taste. Now, if you're not happy with your present brand, and a 38-city survey shows that millions are not, switch to Lucky Strike. You'll agree, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. So be happy. Go Lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy. Go Lucky. Go Lucky Strike today. Remember, Lucky's taste better than any other cigarette. Ladies and gentlemen, immediately following next Sunday's radio program, I'll do my third television show. As my guest stars, I'll have Claudette Colbert, Robert Montgomery, and Basil Rathbone. This will be seen in the eastern area next Sunday, and two weeks later will be seen on the west coast by Kinescope. Happy Easter, everybody. Be sure to hear Dennis Day and the damn life of Dennis Day. Stay with the famous man, show which follows immediately. The Jack Benny Show is heard by our armed forces overseas for the television of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>